Yeah, so today uh, I'm going to talk about challenges of 2D mounted and uh, device application and how we can overcome this based on several uh, reference papers. Uh, actually, the yeah, nowadays the main well, one of the main streams of the uh, research is the 2D uh, research, and for that 2D research, uh, uh, we we need some very thin monolayer uh, yeah sample. Yeah, generally uh, in the yeah, 2D research, the famous materials are graphene or TMDs. But for a 2D uh, magnetic um, research, uh, we need to prepare the 2D magnetic materials. And as we already uh, listened to a presentation two weeks ago from the, the Professor Cheng Gong, he already explained that if you want to get a monolayer, uniform monolayer, the top-down uh, method uh, by the explanation from the bulk uh, to the one rest material is more stable compared to the grown uh, monolayer because grown monolayer can make the, some defect or uh, armorful space there. So uh, to the van der Waals uh, magnetic material uh, can provide the ideal platform for uh, physics and device application. But however, uh, there are very challenges of the to the van der Waals magnets in device application as well as a physical uh, experiment. And they are yeah first uh, the two D van der Waals magnet is very air sensitive and second uh, they have uh, they have a low critical temperature. Why is a very serious problem? Uh, let me take an example. Uh, if yeah, let's assume that you bought a new computer. Uh, when you tested your computer in the computer shop, it worked, but after you just came back to the home, uh, it doesn't work anymore because if your computer have uh, some air sensitive magnet chip in, inside, then uh, it will just, the, the magnet chip will die uh, on the way you came back to home. Uh, so if the chip is air sensitive, it's very serious problem. In other case, uh, this time also you bought a new computer, this time uh, this computer includes a um, uh, very air stable uh, chip, but if uh, their magnetic uh, properties are just low critical temperature, then it can happen that uh, at the beginning you can uh, start your computer, but as it work, your computer makes the heat and temperature goes up and suddenly your computer die because uh, the magnetic material only persists their uh, magnetic properties under the critical temperature. So from these uh, examples, uh, you may, uh, now I guess you may know that uh, these problems, problems are very serious problem in the uh, device applications. So uh, let, let me uh, take a, a more example about this one and how to overcome this. Uh, first of all, uh, the challenge of the 2D van der magnet is the, uh, that materials are very air sensitive uh, materials. So uh, yeah, for example, uh, there is a uh, material uh, which is called uh, iron German telite. Uh, this uh, material, is very, material is very famous because uh, of the its uh, robust properties, uh, it means the, uh, this material is, is very air stable. But even in this uh, air stable to the van der Waals materials, uh, it is uh, easily observed that the, uh, some oxidation or degradation happened uh, by your eyes. Uh, this is just measured by the optical microscope. Also, there is a, uh, some report that uh, by using the TEM. Uh, people directly uh, measure the oxide layer of the, this material, uh, and that is uh, not too thick. So if you use the bulk material, it's not a big deal. But for a 2D uh, research, uh, since we need to reduce the, this, their size, actually, this is a very serious problem. So to overcome this one, uh, we need to prevent uh, some degradation or oxidation in other mass because once it starts, uh, we cannot stop it. So to prevent uh, degradation or oxidation, people work uh, with this material in the uh, glove box to prevent some interaction between uh, oxy oxygen or uh, water uh, and uh, this uh, 2D magnet. And people unnail the sample in the vacuum chamber to remove the, some extra uh, dirt on the sample. And to protect the uh, to the magnet, people kept the uh, material by using some specific material such as uh, HVN. Uh, uh, such like these efforts, uh, you can prevent some degradation or oxidation uh, on the 2D magnet uh, efficiently. 
And let's move on to the second challenge. Our second challenge is uh, <clears throat> that 2D magnets have a very low critical temperature. Uh, this is the uh, critical temperature and uh, coercivity field uh, map. And yet to use the, this material in the, this real space, actually, they should persist their uh, magnetic properties uh, beyond the, this room temperature. So if I check the uh, materials which have uh, their magnetic properties over a room temperature, actually it's just a little. And if uh, even if you just check the monolayer, uh, there's only one monolayer which shows that their magnetic properties over a 300 Kelvin room temperature, and there is the vanadium uh, disenonide. So uh, this is the also very serious problem. But uh, there are many efforts to overcome the, this uh, problem. Uh, the first of all, uh, the first method to find the uh, yeah, overcome the, this temperature problem is search the new material. <laughs> it, it's very trivial, but uh, but it's hard, but it's possible because uh, the first discovery of the, this 2D magnet experimentally uh, was the, just reported in uh, 2017. So it's some of very recent uh, topic uh, research topic. So still there are many 2D magnetic materials have not been studied. So many uh, scientists are uh, searching a new material uh, in this moment too. So yeah, if you find uh, a new material such like the vanadium diselenide, uh, which can uh, sustain their magnetic uh, properties in this uh, room temperature, maybe you can publish the nature paper. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is the one way and the second way is that there was an effort to increase the uh, critical temperature by the uh, doping induced method. Uh, there may be a two kinds of doping uh, method. Uh, one is the electrical method and the other one is a chemical method. In this class, we already learned the, the number of electrons in the transition matter can change the, uh, their magnetic properties. So uh, this is the yeah, similar uh, stories. So if you give a, a doping state, uh, uh, if you yeah, control the doping level in the, your transition metal in uh, 2D van der Waals modules, you can change the uh, magnetic properties. And one of the magnetic properties are, uh, is the uh, critical temperature. So you can uh, tune the, that critical temperature. So uh, there is the experimental result that if you uh, give a gate voltage, then you can tune the uh, doping level. So as a result, you can uh, tune the critical temperature of the uh, yeah, to the van der Waals module. And in other case, uh, you can also change the some uh, compositional ratio of the, your transition metal in the to the van der Waals module. And I just take the example of the uh, iron German telolite. And in this case, the normal iron German telolite shows that is a uh, critical temperature of about 230 Kelvin in bulk state and 150 Kelvin in thin flake. But as you add a whole doping into the, this material, uh, their critical temperature decreases. However, if you add a whole, uh, electron doping here, uh, the critical temperature yeah, increases. And also there is another uh, effort to increase, uh, yeah, improve the uh, critical temperature by the patterning uh, in this method. Um, this one is related to the, our topic that we will learn there are many kinds of, kinds of magnetic energies and they compete to each other. And as a result, we can see the magnetic properties uh, in the real uh, space. And this uh, used the, the competition, yeah, mainly uh, between uh, magnetostatic energy and exchange energy. Uh, for example, in this uh, material, they use the iron German tail light. And here, if you prepare the very thick sample with the very wide or uh, with aeroplane easy access sample, then you may, uh, or see that this kind of domain uh, structure uh, because uh, yeah, to minimize the man manner to static energy. Uh, in this class, uh, we already treated that uh, topic to reduce the man to static energy. They need to uh, make the circle or, and to reduce the minimize the exchange energy, we draw the sub yeah, line uh, in the class. So it is the uh, same uh, situation to reduce the man to static energy they makes the, this kind of stripe or uh, shape uh, domain. But how, uh, yeah, so uh, in the very wide sample, the magnetostatic energy is stable and is dominant. But however, uh, yeah, so, so to minimize the magnetostatic energy, 
Uh, usually there are many circular shape of the magnetic field, but however, yeah, since the, this surface area is finite, there is a straight, a straight field also exists in this uh, material. But however, in the very wide sample, it is not too strong. But however, if you decrease the uh, size of the surface area, uh, relatively the uh, straight field uh, becomes stronger, and this makes the magnetostatic energy unstable. So in the very narrow sample, uh, uh, relatively the exchange energy is more uh, dominant and magnetostatic energy is unstable. So to make to minimize the uh, exchange energy here, the stray uh, fields change their direction to the uh, infield and they make the voltage like this. So yeah, as a result of the experiment, uh, there is the unpatterned one and patterned uh, example and on pattern uh, in the both cases uh, under the critical temperature they shows the some um, stripe shape uh, domain but over a critical temperature on pattern uh, case they lose the aromatic properties but diamond shape pattern uh, shows the uh, transition of the outer plane to the in plane and makes the vortex uh, domain and yeah, the last one I prepared for this presentation is the strain induced uh, uh, the critical temperature improvement. And the example is the chromium germanium selenide. Uh, when you check the, this structure, you can find that chromium, uh, selenium, chromium, chromium uh, makes the 90 degree as a, is the bonding uh, angle. And uh, due to the, this uh, specific uh, structure uh, geometry, uh, it shows the super exchange of ferromagnetic interaction between chromium and chromium, uh, by uh, supported by the uh, weak, uh, the supported by the anti ferromagnetic interaction between chromium and selenium. So, uh, yeah, as a result, uh, you will see the ferromagnetism uh, between uh, chromium and chromium, but they are supported by the uh, anti ferromagnetic uh, interaction between between uh, chromium and selenium, and that I. Uh, Antiferromagnetic interaction is related to the deep energy difference between a, a chromium D uh, orbiter and selenium P orbiter. And in this class, we also learned that if you give a strain, we can uh, tune the orbiter energy. And so it means uh, if you give a strain, you change the orbiter energy and it's related to the AFM interaction between a chromium and selenium. And it affects uh, the yeah, result of the super exchange ferromagnetic interaction between uh, chromium and chromium. So, just shortly, if you give a strain, uh, you can change the their okay, energy properties. Wrap up in thirty seconds. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we, without the strain, uh, this material shows the their Curie temperature of about two hundred Kelvin. But with the uh, strain, you can make you can increase the Curie temperature over uh, uh, this uh, room temperature. So yeah, to summarize, uh, 2D vendors magnetic mature provide a very ideal platforms, but however, there are challenges such like the great uh, degradation problem and low critical temperature problems, but uh, uh, there are many efforts to uh, yeah, overcome the, this one. So in the future, maybe, I guess, uh, there are many interesting features can be observed in this uh, 2D vendors magnetic materials. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, that's a very interesting topic. And I appreciate your very clear uh, and simple slides, not cluttered. It's really nice. Um, any questions? Um, yeah, so what are the best deposition techniques to grow these materials? Oh, pardon me. <coughs> so like, yeah, deposition techniques, like what, what would you uh, use in, in the lab, I guess, to, to grow these materials? Deposition technique? Yeah, deposition. So how, you, how are they mean, made? Yeah. Um, usually people, there, there are many kinds of method, but I think the user method is maybe CVD grown or CVT or yeah, MBE. Yeah, and so on. Yeah, by using the techniques, if you grow the bulk, you can also make the very uh, defectless and very uniform uh, bulk because uh, at the yeah, but yeah, 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 you can make the very uniform bulk, but it's very, yeah, even if you use the any of them, the method is very hard to make the mono layer because uh, when you think about yeah, how the bulk 
uh, is grown. Uh, actually, uh, they also start with the very amorphous uh, state, but as they grow, they uh, just uh, makes the they they become a more uniform and uniform and uniform as they are uh, getting a uh, thicker. So, uh, so it's best to do a bulk and then exfoliate or yeah, something yeah, yeah. after. 